Uh, you go ahead. I'll uh, I'll just adjust something. I'll catch up in a minute. felt like James during a ride or even worse after a ride. A sore butt can understandably put you off cycling but it needn't. There are solutions and today we're going to share some tips and tricks for preventing a sore butt. An area of soft skin that's subjected to pressure, friction, reduced blood flow, heat and maybe excess moisture is unsurprisingly susceptible to a little issue or two. Now that's what your undercarriage can be subjected to do if you don't spend a little bit of time and financial investment. This is usually something that will improve with a bit of conditioning and you can simply ride through. On the other hand, if it's a skin issue, so maybe you're experiencing some redness, swelling, or even broken skin, that does require more immediate action. Now, sorry to be too graphic here, but it could be an inflamed ingrown hair or maybe even a boil. Now, if it is the latter, you need to get that addressed medically quite often and might even require antibiotics. But I don't want to go into too much detail here because we are here to make sure you don't get to that stage. As with anything, your body needs time to adapt. And the same goes for your undercarriage. If you go from next to no riding to epic all day adventures, your butt is going to suffer. Your body will adapt and become more resilient to sitting on the saddle. I'm not saying that your bottom is going to become tough and leather-like, but it will get more used to the position on the saddle. Start with shorter rides and spread them out. Yeah, so if you are getting on the bike the next day or a couple of days after and you feel a bit sore to start with, it's kind of normal when you're getting back into things, so just bear with it and you'll find after sort of five, 10, maybe 20 minutes that you'll hardly notice it. The sight of a small hard bike saddle is enough to put some people off even wanting to try cycling. And it's not uncommon to see non-cyclists coming up and looking at a saddle like this and asking in bewilderment, how on earth do you sit on that? Well, I used to be one of those, and I guess it does seem quite logical that that's going to be uncomfortable and you want something that's wider and softer. Yeah, but let's take it back a little bit, a minute, because your bike saddle actually takes most of your weight when you're cycling. Obviously, your hands and your feet take a little bit, but unless you're standing out of the saddle, it's significantly less. Most of it is gonna be on the saddle. And don't get me wrong, a soft saddle might initially feel really comfortable, but once it's been squashed down for a while, then it will start to put pressure on the wrong areas and it will become more uncomfortable, as well as putting you in a less favorable position, which can lead to further issues down the line. Choosing a saddle can be a bit of a minefield and a guessing game, but lots of uh, saddle companies, such as Celitalia, have a questionnaire of sorts where they ask you all kinds of questions about how long you've been cycling, how long you plan to cycle, your cycling history, your flexibility, etc., and your preferred riding position. And they use that to narrow down your field of choices when choosing a saddle. saddle. For example, Celitalia's ID Match system, which uh, allowed us to choose these saddles for our TT bikes. If you think your saddle might be an issue or you need to choose a new one, we'd recommend getting some expert advice and then trying quite a few saddles. Most bike shops will have a sample range which you can test before you buy. We spoke about previously when we were talking about choosing a saddle, but perhaps more importantly than the choice of saddle, is the position of your saddle. Too high and you're gonna increase the pressure on your saddle, obviously, as all your weight is gonna be on the saddle instead of your feet. But equally, if your saddle is too low, you will increase the pressure on your saddle because your leg position will not be able to take that body weight. So getting the saddle height right is imperative. Also, you can tilt the saddle nose down and you'll see some people do that to try and relieve the pressure, but beware when doing that because a tilted saddle nose will cause you to move forward slightly and put more pressure on your hands and perhaps cause more problems in the long run. All saddles also can be adjusted fore and aft. So you can move them forward or backwards on the rails to get that perfect position. We'd suggest 
starting somewhere in the middle and then moving it forward and backwards slightly to see what feels best. On all of these notes, you're probably best getting an expert to do your bike setup to get your saddle in that perfect position so that it takes as much weight as possible without excess pressure in any spots. Also remember that while you're riding, you can actually move your position on the saddle to alleviate some of that pressure rather than staying in one sustained position for your entire ride. A small adjustment, maybe going into the, into the aero bars on a, on a TT bike or into the drops on a road bike can make a big difference to those pressure points. And if you constantly moving and changing, standing out of the saddle for a few minutes, you will feel a lot better at the end of the ride. We would recommend that you get your bike saddle position set up by an expert. Getting it absolutely perfect to the millimeter can make all the difference to your saddle comfort. When we talk about what you sit on, it's easy to only think about the saddle, but we should really also include your cycle shorts because they play a big role in alleviating some of that downward pressure and preventing chafing on your saddle. Now, when it comes to shorts, to a certain extent, you do get what you pay for. A pair of basic shorts with a thin pad might be perfectly fine if you're just doing short rides or spin classes. However, if you're watching this video, I imagine you're experiencing some sort of issue. So, the high-end shorts are actually designed with varying thicknesses of foam, but also varying densities to support certain areas and alleviate pressure on other parts. But when you are looking for shorts, another thing to be aware of are the seams, because they can cause rubbing, and once an area starts to rub, it's likely to continue, and it could even lead to infection. Speaking of which, cleanliness is very important when it comes to cycle shorts. In fact, many cycle shorts actually come with an antibacterial chamois to make sure that they stay clean. So always use a clean pair of cycling shorts. Also, don't hang around in your cycle shorts. Cycle shorts are made for cycling. After your ride, get them off and get clean as quickly as possible to prevent any buildup of bacteria because a warm, damp chamois is the ideal breeding ground for bacteria. One more note, cycle shorts are not designed to be used with underwear. This is a note for girls, but also boys, ditch the underwear and you will immediately be more comfortable in your cycle shorts. Chamois cream isn't necessary for everybody, but if you are having issues, I would suggest that you experiment with it. It is designed to help reduce friction, and quite a lot of them will come with antibacterial properties, so you've got that benefit as well. Now, it's best applied either to your shorts or directly to your skin, and use it liberally in any areas where you find you might have potential issues. Unfortunately, finding comfort on a bike saddle is going to take a bit of time and some trial and error. Do speak to the experts, but also speak to your riding mates and your friends because you might find that something that's worked for them might work for you. But also remember that everybody's a little bit anatomically different, so their solution might not be your solution. Once you do find the saddle that works for you and your riding position, make sure that you record that riding position down to the millimeter. And also, you might want to buy a second or even a third saddle because there's nothing worse than having the saddle that's perfect for you discontinued and you have to start the process all over again. Yeah, totally. Well, hopefully this has given you enough ideas that you can go away and enjoy cycling without any issues. Give us a like if you've enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet done so. And remember, you can also check us out on social media. Happy riding.